All right, we have a game between this uh, Serbian international master, uh, Saldasa Marnikovic. So he's an international master, rated 23.39. And he's going against Lou Malyi, who is difficult to get pictures of. So Fide doesn't even have picture a picture of her. But she is now rated at 23.99. So... Uh, she's had kind of a meteoric rise of over 200 points in, in the last year. So, yeah, this is the only picture I could find of Lu Mao Yi. Uh, as you can see right here, the game was played in August of this year, August of 2022, and it was played in Serbia. And you can see the actual live ratings for both the players right there. Let's go ahead and get right into the game. Looking at this from White's perspective, um, this is kind of an opening that I would play. So uh, the Serbian master starts with pawn to c4, the English, and Lou Malie goes with pawn to e5. And this ends up being kind of a like reversed Sicilian as Lou, or excuse me, the Serbian master plays knight to c3. And this is an opening that's been played tens of thousands of times, if not maybe hundreds of thousands of times. But then Lu Mao Yi plays knight to c6, which is not as popular of a move. Uh, so this has only been played many thousands of times. Normally it's knight to f6 here instead. And so uh, a bit of a rare game already. Uh, we have knight to f3 now by the Serbian master. Knight to f3, you know, normally a pretty a good strong move here. Um, defending the king. Also a good offensive police. And now Lu Mao Yi plays pawn to g6. And this is now a very rare game. There's only like 50 games in master play that have been played like this. Of course, she's looking to Fianchetto the bishop there. Um, that's the whole idea behind that sort of move. And now uh, the Serbian master strikes in the center. Uh, we have pawn to d4 by white. And Lu Mao Yi goes ahead and captures on d4. So we have e captures d4. And then knight, the, the Serbian master actually plays another wrinkle here. He plays knight to d5. So this is, this is, a, is an okay move, but um, not something that's been played very often. Uh, it, it's, it seems more likely that you should probably capture this pawn um, when you can. I think he, he manages to capture it anyway, even though here Lu Malyi plays bishop to g7. Uh, you know, putting another defender on it. So there's two defenders, two to two attackers. So kind of hard to win that pawn at this point, but uh, perhaps a little later. Now the Serbian master plays bishop to g5, attacking the queen. This is definitely the best move in the position. And Lu Malyi plays what seems like kind of an awkward move. She plays knight c to e7, um, you know, which, you know, Shouldn't we try to develop another piece? Well, it turns out this is actually the strongest move in the position. So she did find the best move here. And now, uh, since that knight has moved, now the Serbian master goes ahead and grabs the d4 pawn. So we have knight captures on d4. And then Lu Malyi plays pawn to h6, trying to kick the bishop. And, of course, the bishop does move. He moves to h4. So bishop to h4 is the best move that the Serbian master could play. And now Lu Malyi plays pawn to g, or excuse me, pawn to c6, looking to kick the knight. And it, the uh, the engine does suggest just go ahead and making the trade here, but um, he goes ahead and moves his knight back to c3 rather than capturing on e7. And perhaps this is because as white, yeah, you're looking to probably get a win. And if you just start trading down pieces, it's more likely that a strong player is going to be able to get a draw against you. So he's probably playing for that win still. And Lu Malyi finds the strongest move here. Uh, she plays queen to b6, putting pressure on the pawn, but also a second attacker on the knight. Um, so a couple threats at once. But, you know, this international master, of course, is going to find a way to deal with that. He finds the strongest move, which is knight to b3. Uh, blocking the pawn and saving the knight. And now Lu Malyi plays pawn to d5. 
And there were only three games that have ever been, well, in, in chess.com's database, database, there's only three games that have been played uh, at master level like this. And in the other two, um, they played E4. So both, both players played E4, and white went on to win. But in this game, instead, the Serbian master goes ahead and plays C captures on D5. C captures on D5. And then Lou Malie plays queen to B4, eyeing that bishop over there. And, of course, the, they've got to do something about that. So the Serbian master actually goes ahead and captures the knight. So trading his bishop for a knight. A bit odd. And now uh, knight captures back. I say a bit odd because usually you want to hang on to your, your bishops in the end game if you can, but um, that was the best move, capturing on e7. And then, yes, black plays. Knight captures on e7. And now the Serbian master plays pawn captures on c6. And Lou Malli plays pawn to a5. So leaving that pawn just kind of hanging there. And... Now the Serbian master plays pawn to e3. And it was suggested that perhaps a better move might be uh, knight to d2, which is interesting. Seems like you hang your pawn here, but I guess the rook being able to attack the queen and the pressure of this pawn here is the reason that that, that wouldn't work. But nonetheless, he plays pawn to e3. And Lu Yi advances the pawn again. She plays pawn to a4, uh, attacking the knight, forcing it to reposition itself. Uh, so we have knight to d4 now. And now Lu Yi goes ahead and pushes the pawn again. She plays pawn to a3. Uh, I think she wants another queen or something like that. Uh, the Serbian master finds the strong, strongest response. He plays queen to d2. And now... Um, Lu Yi actually goes ahead and captures the B pawn. Captures the B pawn. The engine does suggest that she might be better off just capturing this pawn here. But uh, nonetheless, we have queen captures on B2. And then white also plays queen captures on B2. And then Lu Yi plays pawn captures queen on B2. The rook is under attack and has to move over to B1. So white plays rook b1, the best move in the position. And now Lu Yi goes ahead and plays knight captures on c6. And that's, that's a great move. That's the best move in the position. And now we have bishop finally developing. So the Serbian master finally developing his bishop to b5, pinning the knight to the king. We've got an absolute pin there, so that knight's not going anywhere. And now Lu Yi activates her rook. Rook to a3, attacking the knight. What, what is he going to do? Well, um, the Serbian master plays king to d2. King to d2. Um, Might have been better to go ahead and move his knight to d5, but really both moves are about equal. At this point, black does have the advantage. The engine is saying uh, that... Black is ahead by four points, even though if you look at the, there's no material advantage for either player. It's just the, the position is superior for Black. So the, the computer is saying she should be able to get a point, four point advantage at this point. And now Lu Yi finally castles. What are we, like 15 moves into the game? No, we're 20 moves into the game. And finally uh, Lu Yi castles. There will be no castling for the Serbian master, though. And so he goes ahead and plays bishop captures knight. We have pawn, so bishop captures knight on c6. We have b pawn captures on c6. And now the Serbian master goes ahead and gobbles up that uh, potential queen there. The b2 pawn is captured. Lu Yi plays rook to d8. Rook to d8. An absolute pin on the d4 knight. And now Lu Yi plays knight to b1, attacking the rook. So knight to b1 attacks the rook. That was the best move in the position. And the Serbian, or excuse me, <laughs> the Serbian plays knight to b2, attacking Lu Yi's rook. Lu Yi uh, 
pulls her rook back to a5, which is the best spot for it. And now we have king to e2 by white. And Lu Yi advances another candidate pawn, attacking the knight. So she plays pawn to c5. And now the knight must reposition itself. Uh, when the knight moves, though, it's going to unleash its own bishop on, uh, or it's going to unleash uh, black's bishop on its rook. So it's okay that this is a fork. So forking the two rooks is the knight. So knight to c6 attacks both rooks, but Lumai Yi doesn't care. She's going to get the rook on b2. So um, Lumai Yi actually plays rook to, yeah, rook to a6 attacking. And now the Serbian master does grab Lu Yi's d8 rook. And then Lu Yi plays bishop captures on b2, getting the other rook. So material is, oh, well, actually, so white actually has a material advantage at this point. So the Serbian master is up by one point. But if you look at the analysis, it is saying that black is winning by over three points. Now we have rook to d8 by the Serbian master. And Lu Yi pushes her pawn, which is the best move in the position as judged by Stockfish. Stockfish says that's the best move. Uh, that's the engine that chess.com runs, by the way. And now the Serbian master plays rook to d5. Rook to d5, which is definitely a strong move in the position. And Lu Yi plays bishop f5. Now that is the best move in the position. And now uh, knight to d2 by the Serbian master perhaps eyeballing that pawn, but uh, Lu Mal Yi, of course, pushes the pawn, attacking knight, the knight. That's the best move in the position. And um, yeah, rather than reposition the knight, uh, the Serbian master tries to fight fire with fire and plays pawn to e4, attacking the bishop. And now Lu Mal Yi just goes ahead and pushes her pawn once again. We have pawn to c2. So now threatening to get a queen here, and there's no attackers of that. So uh, the Serbian master has to do something. He finds a very strong move. He plays knight to b3, covering that square. So if a new, new queen is born, it will soon be gone. And now the Serbian master, or excuse me, and now Lu Yi plays bishop captures e4, attacking the rook. And so the rook must move and is kind of happy to move and, and keep an eye on that pawn. And now uh, Lu Mal Yi plays rook to d6, attacking this knight here on d8. And then the Serbian master actually attacks the bishop, trying to, again, you know... You, you can sometimes defend yourself. So if you're attacked, you can sometimes defend yourself by attacking a more valuable piece than is being attacked. But attacking an equal value piece a lot of times won't work out. But nonetheless, the Serbian master plays pawn to f3, and Lu Mal Yi plays bishop to d3, certainly the best move in the position. And it is at this point that the Serbian master does resign the game. The game is over. Uh, the king's in check. He's going to have to get out of check. Um, you know, it's difficult to say what exactly he should do. Um, but no matter what he does, the knight is gone. So Lu Ma Yi is up five points. Uh, you know, she has a possibility of maybe, well, probably what's going to happen is they're going to have to trade their knight for this pawn. And it's just going to be a hopeless position. So, yeah. At that point, like I said, the Serbian master did resign. He's actually increased in rating. He's, uh, as, as we did see, what, uh, 30, he's, he's, uh, his rating has gone up since this, since this game. So he, he lost to Lu Mal Yi, but he's been doing good otherwise. Lu Mal Yi is a, is a bit of a beast. Yeah, so his, uh, his rating is up to 2339, even though he lost to Lu Mal Yi uh, back when he was only uh, 37 or 30, uh, 2307. So he's uh, been improving his game here, even though he's in his 50s. And so has Lu Mal Yi. So Lu Mal Yi's rating now is, you know, there it was 2225. And that was back in August. And now it is almost 2400. Anyway, that's another game of Lu Mal Yi's. Thank you for checking that out. Uh, please like and subscribe. 
Um, I will be putting out a game review every day. I also put out tactics. So if you're into chess, um, this is the place to be. Please let me know also if there's any other aspect of the game you'd like me to get more into. If there's some sort of tournament or something you think I should check out, let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.